Hey you guys, Yulia here. So today's video will be a first garden tour of the year and I will start in the front of our garden where the daffodils are blooming. They're a little past their prime, but that's okay. And also fair warning, the garden has not been cleaned up, mulched or weeded. And occasionally I do like to do those garden tours where it's real life, um, kind of what you see is what you get uh, kind of garden tour. <laughs> All right, so here are the beautiful daffodils. And I think when I showed you this bed last time, I only had a few of them blooming. And I have been looking for a perfect time to film these. And unfortunately, I missed it because I had to work. And then we had these two days of 95 degree weather and they just got burned out. A lot of them um, actually passed the prime. But again, that's okay. Um, I will kind of zoom in little bit and show you all the individual varieties or at least the ones that i know the names of and this is about um thousand daffodils a little bit over i think i played, uh, planted maybe 300 more last fall but i am loving it so um, this part right here i don't know if you guys remember i expanded last summer this is all new no dig bed right here and i planted the daffodils last fall they look absolutely gorgeous and they're doing just fine all right let me uh, zoom into individual varieties now actually let me show you this bed from this angle so you can see just how many daffodils there are they're just so magical um, okay so let me zoom in to this first grouping right here these were sold under the name of Sweet Love. Um, and when I looked up Sweet Love, they actually look nothing like it. So I don't know exact name of these, but I love them. They actually have multiple flowers on the uh, stem. And I planted these uh, three or four years ago. And the beauty of daffodils is that they naturalize and they multiply. So this was one bulb before, and you could see just how big this clump has gotten. So I, um, after a couple of years, you will get two bulbs, three bulbs, five bulbs, and the clump just grows and it gets fuller and fuller and more beautiful. So this lonely daffodil right here is the Mount Hood. And I only have few left because they just got burned out in uh, the 95 degree heat. But I love Mount Hood Daffodil. Um, the Corona, when it opens up, is a pale yellow and it fades quickly to white. And it's this gorgeous, almost pure white daffodil with this uh, bigger Corona right here. These beauties right here are called Cool Flame. And uh, when they open up, the Corona is really bright. And then they um, age out to these beautiful peachy, colors it almost looks like a pink charm and i kind of confused the two but uh, let me show you the pink charm right now so you can see the difference so as you can see the pink charm looks very similar i think the difference is that the corona is colored on the fringes um, as opposed to the entire thing and let me introduce you to my second favorite daffodil of all time this is uh, Janquila Pueblo. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right. I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong. But this is the first time I'm growing this daffodil and I love them. I love the dainty look of them. Uh, the fact that they have multiple flowers on the stem. I think these are going to look gorgeous in bouquets and in wild naturalistic gardens they are very suitable and it's just the cutest most adorable thing ever and here is my absolute favorite daffodil of all time this is thalia thalia looks a little tired after two days of extreme heat here in the spring um, but still looks beautiful and i love this daffodil because it is so universal um, you can work it in naturalistic setting or formal setting. It is uh, pure white in color. It has multiple flowers on the stem, naturalizes really well. It works in bouquets. 
um, amazingly because it's a great filler. It could be a focal piece in a bouquet or in the garden. You can plant it in masses or in a small grouping. It just works. <laughs> and it is um, my um, absolute favorite so far. I haven't found anything better yet, but um, definitely try this one. This daffodil right here is called Lemon Beauty. Um, this is a split corona type daffodil uh, with a really bright yellow corona. Um, they do fade though to uh, more mellow yellow and I just love how fluffy they are. This little guy right here is Pepite and I like Pepite because it is a reverse color daffodil. You can see the corona is white and the petals are yellow so I think it's um, kind of fun. Okay, so the daffodils that you see in the front row here uh, were sold under the name of Peaches and Cream. I doubt it that that's what it is because they look a lot more lemony yellow to me than peach color. Um, they're still really beautiful and I like the corona shape, but I think maybe this is Peaches and Cream right there and somehow they got mislabeled maybe with the few bright daffodils in here but in any case i am enjoying them very much this beautiful grouping of daffodils here are british gamble and they have been blooming for quite a while and uh, some of them are deeply fried already but still look at this beautiful flower so british gamble has one of the biggest coronas in daffodil world let me show you right there like look how big those flowers are look at that isn't this gorgeous so this uh, patch right here is three years old and they did multiply quite well and these here are white lion daffodils and it's a beautiful double daffodil and as you can see they are also tired from being out in the heat but uh, when i started this bed the white lion and the british gambol were only the two daffodils that i planted and you could see how much they naturalized already it's like a meadow of daffodils it's a beautiful really reliable uh, flower to try also, I wanted to show you how the front sidewalk daffodils are doing and also the pansies that I planted in the previous video. Um, the ice king daffodils are kind of done. They said they did not like the heat. They kind of fried. Uh, pansies did not like the heat either, so I had to water them uh, every single day. But the Sir Winston Churchill daffodils actually showed up and they look so beautiful. And check out the yellow middle together with the pansies uh, yellow middle. I actually did not plan that, but it turned out so pretty. But um, the daffodils are going to fade uh, and the pansies are going to fill in. I think it's going to be beautiful for months to come and it's beautiful right now i'm enjoying it and here's another view of this bed from this angle it looks like a daffodil river in here i love it and it actually uh, works quite well for the front of our house because we do get deer here in the front this is not a fenced area um, and i do love my tulips <laughs> but it would have been just too much spraying for me for deer every spring, too much work if I planted tulips in here. And I do love daffodils, they're so beautiful. Uh, what I also have been trying to do is add a lot more natives here. And I do have a beautiful royal fern growing here, uh, some uvularia, and I finally got my first Mertensia virginica bloom. Look at that. Isn't that so precious? I'm having the hardest time with this plant. Not sure why. It's supposed to be a very easy native ephemeral. Um, you can plant it quite thickly. They grow into uh, in the understory. Uh, and I planted about 20 
two years ago and I only have 10 survive. Not sure why. Um, also, this bed is full of hostels. I don't know if you could see they're starting to come in here. And what we do, we actually don't even cut the daffodil leaves. The hostas come in and they cover the leaves. It works so well because you do need to leave daffodil foliage for at least six weeks so they can gather enough strength to produce flowers for next year. And it works well because the hostas come in, we don't even see the daffodil foliage, it yellows, we don't even have to cut it. So let's move on to the sidewalk garden, uh, but first I just wanted you to orient yourself. So that's the daffodil bed right there, that's the front of our house, and this is the sidewalk garden. Um, I don't have a lot going on here yet. Uh, the tulips are just now starting to come in and we are not having the best tulip year because the winter was so mild, uh, we just did not have enough chill hours and also uh, the spring was super dry. And I could have been here watering my tulips, but I did not have the time because I was working on other people's gardens. Um, and I think once the tulips come into full bloom, it's going to be beautiful still, but not as tall or as long of a stem that they usually have. But what I mostly wanted to show you is how I clean up my beds in the spring. Um, so I actually leave a lot of the debris from all of the plants right in my beds. So it's called chop and drop. You can see right around the grass over there. I just chop it up and I leave it in the bed. There was a Joe Pye weed over here. It's all stays right in the bed. And what I do every other year, I actually mulch all of my beds. And um, I mulch right on top of the plant debris and it all biodegrades and creates great soil. It feeds your plants and it actually leaves all of the beneficial insects right in your garden without throwing them away. Um, so they can take care of your um, bed bugs in uh, the summer. And what else I wanted to show you that is absolutely stunning right now is this Kwanzaa cherry. Look at this beauty. It's pretty much in full bloom right now. We're actually having a lot cooler weather in the next couple of weeks, so I'm hoping it's going to stay just like this for a while. Only spot I do not mulch is the hell strip right here because I have a lot of self seeders here, like the Cleome, Cosmos, Fever Fuse, and I just discovered a huge crop of Euphorbia marginata right here, and Gara, which I'm super excited about because those are beautiful plants. But um, let me just show you this view of the Kwanzaa cherry, and we have the red bud that started to bloom recently, and also the weeping cherry. The three of them this time of the year are so pretty together. Look at that. All right, you guys, this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.